So now that we have our data and we've organized it so that it's easier to kind of get a, a feel for what the data sort of looks like, we can start really analyzing the data. So there's three phases here so far that we're going to talk about. We've, so far we've talked about collecting data, which is your, your samples and your populations and your sampling method, avoiding bias. We've talked about organizing data using uh, tables and stem and leaf plots. Today we're going to talk about uh, analyzing the data. Now we already talked uh, in the lead up to PSSA, we reviewed the whole concept of mean, median, and mode. Those are the measures of central tendency. In other words, what's the one number around which the data is grouped? So what's one number I can pick to represent uh, the whole group of numbers, whether that's the average, um, the mean, what happens most, the mode, or the middle of the data, which is the median. That's one way to look at data. How, what's it all grouped around? The other way to look at data is to look at how spread out it is. That's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. The measures of variability. If you look at the root word, you can kind of start to get a feel for what this means. Measure of variability, write this down on your note sheet, is a number that is used to describe how spread out the data is. We did mention this with the range. The range is one way to show this. It's the largest minus the smallest, which is fine, except what if we have outliers? Think about what that would do to our range. If I have a data set that's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 500, well, my range is 499, but does that describe how spread out my data is? No. My data is really, really, really scrunched together. I've got ones, twos, and threes, a lot of them, and then all of a sudden I jump to 500. So the range only looks at either end of the data set. I'm going to use a uh, two by four here to kind of symbolize this. So the range is this, but we don't know what's happening here. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at other points within the data. We're going to look at what we call quartiles. If you look at the uh, root word, quart, quarter, uh, notice it's divide. I want you to kind of underline or highlight this. Divides the data into four equal parts. Just like a quarter is a fourth of a dollar, so a quartile is a fourth of the data. You already, uh, we've already kind of done this. Now think about this. If you were in Mr. Brewer's class, and he said, I want you to cut this two by four without using a tape measure. Well, what would you do? You'd have to kind of eyeball it. Well, to cut this into four equal parts, the first step, obviously, would be to probably kind of eyeball where the center is. Okay, so I eyeball the center. Let's see. That looks about like the middle there. Close enough. And now I have two parts. Now, if you think about this as a data set, what would the middle be? The middle is the median. We've already talked about how to find the median. Uh, just remember, if there's an even number of numbers, you've got to take the middle two numbers and take the average. Now, again, that might describe where the middle is and where the two ends are, but we still don't know what's happening in here. So to divide this into four equal parts, I'm going to take the middle the first middle here, this first half, and I'm going to divide that in half again. We call that the first quartile. Now notice I'm starting to get a little bit more specific with my data here. So now I don't have to have the, the biggest or the smallest and the biggest. Now I also have the middle of the data, and even more specific than that, I have the middle of a middle. Down here, this is called the third quartile, or the third Q. The median, another name for the median is the second quartile. Okay? So what I've done here, now notice I've got five different numbers to describe my, my, how spread out my data is, rather than just two, like I have with the range. So there's five key points that we're going to include here when we talk about measures of variability. Let's get these definitions here for the quartile. Notice they are all medians. Okay, all the middle. So first, obviously, again, if we want to cut something into four equal parts, cut it in half first, and then cut each half in half. So we're going to find this one first, and then we'll find the first quartile and the third quartile. Now, just listing these numbers, these middles, doesn't do us very good, very much good. 
because then it's still very hard to visualize. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw a picture. We're going to draw a picture called a box and whisker plot that's going to show us how spread apart the data is. I mentioned this in some classes um, when we, where we had time to get to it. Um, but a box and whisker plot really shows how spread out it is, and it really highlights from the first to the third quartile you're going to see in a second. Okay? A couple of things here I want you to, to, to kind of underline. The lowest and highest fourths, that would be here and here, are whiskers. And then the middle half, that would be from the first quartile to the third quartile, is represented with a box. So you have a box for all this, okay, with the median shown, and then you have two whiskers to show, here's going out from the middle half of my data to that smallest and that largest point. Okay, so again, here are the steps we're going to follow. This is in your notes. Put the data in order from least to greatest. Obviously, that's the first step in finding the median. Okay, then we're going to find these five points. Let me give you kind of an order here. Smallest, highest, that's pretty easy. Do those first, the high and the low. We'll do this third, okay? And then it doesn't matter. You can do this fourth, this fifth, doesn't matter. Just remember, you can't find the first and the third until you find the median. And then we're going to uh, draw the number line, okay? And then we're going to put these five key points above it and draw the box and whiskers. So let's walk through what that looks like. Okay, we've got this data set right here. So let's put it in order. Okay, we have 13, 15, cross off as you go, 17, 19, 19, 21, 21, 25. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. Now, if I have eight numbers, my median is kind of in the middle here, right? Now, I know you're going to say, well, the median is 19. Now, this is very important. Which 19 is the median? Well, it can't be this one, because if it's this one, then I only have three numbers here, but then I have four numbers here, so that's not the middle. It can't be this one, because then I have three here and four here. Remember, technically, I know the average between 19 and 19 is 19, but technically the median here is not either of these 19s. Technically the median is the 19 that's in between here, okay? So let's do this. We'll do the high is 25, the low is 13. You do need to list these. The second quartile, second quartile or the median is 19. Okay, now that I've got my median here, notice if I had picked this as my median, then here would have been 15. That would have been my median, my first quartile. But now notice I'm taking these four numbers, these four numbers here, not three numbers. So what you pick as your median is very important. And this, you only have to worry about this is if you have an even number of numbers. So my median here is between 15 and 17. So my first quartile, let's show a little work here. 15 plus 17 divided by two is 32 divided by two, which is 16. Okay, my third quartile. Okay, again, I have four numbers, not three, because this 19 is not the median. It's the 19 that's in between these. The 19 you can't see. So my median, you notice I have two numbers here, two numbers here. So I've got a median of, or a third quartile of 21. I'm not going to make a show work there because it's the same two numbers. Now notice what we've got. We have two, two, two. Two. I had eight numbers, so there are two numbers in each fourth of the data. So now I need to number my number line, okay? And I have to have all these points on here. So it's got to go from 13 to 25. I'm going to go by twos, starting with uh, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25. Guys, make sure you number the number line. Otherwise, putting these dots doesn't make sense. Do not put your dots uh, directly on the number line. Uh, box and whisker plot, which is what we're going to draw next, always hovers above the uh, number line here. So we're going to put a dot above each of our five key points. 
Okay, so 13 gets a dot. Our first quartile, 16, right here, gets a dot. Try and keep them on the same level. Okay, 19 gets a dot. 21 gets a dot. And 25 gets our last dot. Five key points, and there are our five points. Now, what I want to do, remember, if you remember the definition, we have whiskers going out to our last points. And the box is around our middle half of the data. So, in these three middle points, we're going to draw vertical lines, and then we're going to uh, cap the box on the top and the bottom. And there you have it. Now, just looking at this, notice here, my, uh, my th we've got, here's my first fourth, second, third, and fourth fourth. If you look, this fourth looks a little bit smaller, doesn't it? And notice, what's my range here? My range here is 2, right? What's my range here? From 21 to 25 is 4. I'm getting these ranges by just subtracting these two numbers. Okay? From here, this line is 16, remember? 16 and 19 is 3. And here, uh, 16 to 13 is 3. So notice, these two distances here are equal. That's because they have equal ranges. This distance here is smaller because it's the smallest range out of all fourths, and this is the longest. So notice how this picture does give us a good shot of how spread out the data is. Okay? Let's do one more. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. Now this one, we've got a couple crazy outliers, so let's put them in order first. We have 12, 15, 21, I'm sorry, 19. 19, then 21, uh, 74, 75, and 83. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ooh, lucky us, we have an odd number of numbers. Here we go. Okay, middle number, 21. Okay, so we have our high, we have our low. The high is 83, the low is 12. Okay, the median, second quartile, is 21. Okay, now, this is the median. So I cannot count this in the lower half, I can't count this in the higher half because it's in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna find for my first quartile the middle of these three numbers, 15. Okay, there's my first Q. For my second quartile, Okay, again, 21 is not, is not part of the higher half of the data. 75 is my third quartile. Okay, now, here we go. Run out of battery, I gotta hurry. Let's go uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, so, estimate where these dots are. 83 is the high. 75 is the third. Notice. Not much distance here from 74 to 83. All right, 12 is the low, 15 is the first quartile, and then 21 is the third quartile. Notice how spread out this is, okay? Whiskers for my last two points, and then look at my box. Where is the biggest jump in my data? Right here in my third fourth, right here. Look at that range. That's all the way from 21 to 75. This one's from 75 to 83, 15 to 12. Notice this really gives us, here's a range of six, this really gives us a picture of how spread out this is without having to look at the numbers.